Hello grade 10 learners, have a nice day. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'll be discussing to you how to graph a polynomial function using x and y intercepts. Let us begin with the steps in graphing polynomial function. First step, determine the graphs and behavior using the leading coefficient test. This is very important. And if in case you forget about this lesson, please go over my previous video about end behavior of the graph using the leading coefficient test. Step 2. Find the x-intercepts or zeros of the function. And for step 3, find the y-intercept of the function. I also made a separate videos on finding the x and y-intercept of the function. Fourth, find the maximum number of turning points. Fifth, plot the points x and y-intercept in the Cartesian coordinate plane. And last, connect the points with a smooth continuous curve considering the behavior of the graph relative to x-axis at each root or the multiplicity of the root. And always remember that the graph of a polynomial function is always a smooth continuous curve. Let's consider the first example. Sketch the graph of the given polynomial function y is equal to negative times quantity of x plus 2 times quantity of x plus 1 times quantity of x minus 1 times quantity of x plus 3. Now let's begin with the first step. Determine the end behavior of the graph. So in determining the end behavior of the graph, we need to have the leading term. We cannot easily determine the leading term since a given function is in factored form. So we have to solve first for the leading term. How are we going to do that? Just multiply the first term of every factor. So we have to copy the negative sign outside the grouping symbol. So we have negative and then x times x times x times x. And our answer here is negative x to the power of 4. This negative x to the power of 4 is our leading term. And our leading term consists of the leading coefficient as well as our degree. So we can now say that the end behavior of our graph is that it falls to the left and to the right. Why is that so? Since our leading coefficient here is negative 1 and negative 1 is less than 0 and our degree is 4 and 4 is an even number. If you can still remember the four cases of the end behavior of the graph, this is the fourth case where our graph falls to the left and to the right if the leading coefficient is less than zero and the degree is an even number. Next, solve for the x-intercept. To solve for the x-intercept, we have to let the variable y equals zero. So our given function, this is our given function, let's substitute y with zero. So we have here already an equation. Now to solve for x, we have to equate its factor with 0. We have x plus 2 is equal to 0. Next, x plus 1 is equal to 0. x minus 1 is equal to 0. x plus 3 is equal to 0. Solve for x, transpose to the right side of the equation. So this 2, it will become negative 2. 1, it becomes negative 1. This negative 1, it becomes positive 1. And this 3 it becomes negative 3. So we have now the x-intercepts. So our x-intercepts are negative 2, negative 1, 1, and negative 3. And their corresponding points on the x-axis are negative 2, 0. Okay, why we have here negative 2, 0 is because the value of our x is negative 2, and we already let y that is equal to 0. And remember that a point, has always the x and the y value. Point is always the x followed by the y value. Okay, x and y value. Okay, so these are our points on the x axis. Negative 2, 0, negative 1, 0, 
1, 0, and negative 3, 0. Now, let's proceed with the third step. Solve for the y-intercept. So, in solving for the y-intercept, this is now the time we're in. We're going to let x is equal to 0. So, we have the function. Then, substitute the variable x with 0. So, we have here. Then, we have to simplify. So, copy the negative sign. 0 plus 2 is 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1 times 0 minus 1 is negative 1 times 0 plus 3, 3. Then multiply. So negative 2 times 1 times negative 1 times 3, that is positive 6. So it means that our y-intercept is 6. And the corresponding points on the y-axis is 0, 6. In here, the value of our x is 0. That's why we have here 0, 6. Next, find the maximum number of turning points. So, by using the formula, at most n minus 1. So, we'll be using n minus 1. So, we have... 4 minus 1, that is equal to 3. Okay, remember the maximum number of turning points is at most n minus 1. So we have already an idea that the maximum number of turning points is 3. Step 4, plot the points. So what are the points that we are going to plot? Of course, points in the x-axis we have here. This is coming from the x-intercept and also the point on the y-axis. We have 0, 6. So, of course, we have to draw a Cartesian coordinate plane. But in here, I have already made the drawing. Before you can have this drawing, of course, you're going to make the x in the y-axis class. So, see to it that your x and y axis should be in line with the line in the graphing paper. So, if you have graphing paper, it should be a line with the line, not on the space. Okay? The vertical number line is the y axis and here it's the x axis class. So, in labeling... The number in your x and y axis, you have to base that one to your x and y intercept. So since here, we only have up to negative 3 and positive 2, then do not write it anymore up to 10. Okay? See to it that you can plot all of these points. And for the points on the y axis, the highest number is 6, and you can have only up to 6 or 10. Another thing that you have to remember that see to it that the interval from 0 to 1 to the right and to the left should be equal. Okay? The interval for in the x axis we have here by 1. So 0, 1, 2, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. For the y-axis, the interval is by 2. We have 0, 2, 4, 6. Okay. Again, the interval should be the same. Next, we have to plot the points. So, first, you have negative 2, 0. I have already plotted this one. So, this is the point, negative 2, 0. Next, negative 1, 0. And then we have 1, 0. This point here. And negative 3, 0. For the y-intercept, we have 0, 6. So, this is the point 0, 6. Then, remember that the end behavior of our graph is it falls to the left and falls to the right. So, that's why we have here falling to the left. So, that's why we have an arrowhead going down. And then, it will pass. Remember that the graph will pass all the x and y intercept. 
Knowing that the graph will pass all the x and y intercept plus the end behavior, then we can now have the corresponding graph. So here, it will pass through here and then pass another point and then pass another point. Always remember that it will be a smooth continuous curve. Then down over here. So see, we have here three turning points. First turning point, second, and our third turning point. So this is now the graph of our function. Okay, another example. Y is equal to negative times quantity of X plus 1 squared times quantity of X minus 1 times quantity of x minus 2 square. Okay. Determine the end behavior. Same with example number 1. So we have to multiply the first term, but remember that we have here an exponent outside the parenthesis. So we have negative times this one, this is x square, then x times x square. And we have negative x to the power of 5. This is the leading term. So we can now have already an idea that the graph rises to the left and falls to the right. Okay? Why? Because our leading coefficient is negative 1, which is less than 0. And our degree here is 5, which is an odd number. Okay, next, so we have to solve for the x-intercept. Let y is equal to 0. Then we have here, to copy the given function, substitute y with 0. Then equate its factor with 0. x plus 1. Don't write anymore the exponent 2. The Exponent 2 tells us the multiplicity of this 0. Okay? So, we have x plus 1. Next, x minus 1. And then last is x minus 2. So, for x, so we have negative 1. And here, transpose, we have positive 1. And here, we have positive 2. So, the x-intercepts are negative 1. 1 and 2. But remember that it has its corresponding multiplicity. Points on the x-axis are negative 1, 0, 1, 0, and 2, 0. Okay, they, they are based on the values of the x-intercept and our y here is 0. That's why we have here 0 as the value of our y. Next. Okay, next we have to solve for the y-intercept. That is the time where we let our x is equal to 0. So copy first the given function and then substitute x variable with 0. So we have it here now. Then we have to simplify. So negative, bring down. 0 plus 1 is 1, and 1 squared is still 1. That's why we have here 1. 0 minus 1 is negative 1, so we have here negative 1. 0 minus 2 is negative 2 squared, so negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And then simplify, negative times 1 times negative 1 times 4, that is equal to 4. So therefore, our y-intercept is equal to 4, and the corresponding point on the y-axis is 0, 4. Now let's find the maximum number of turning points. So following the formula n minus 1, so we have 4, because our degree here is 5, 2, 4, and plus 1, we have 5. Then plot the point. We're going to plot the point on the x in the y-axis. 
These are our x-intercepts, and this one is our y-intercept. But before we plot, remember that our root has its multiplicity. Okay. Remember the multiplicity of a zero or a root. So for negative one here, the multiplicity is two. And two is an even number. Therefore, the graph is tangent to the x-axis. For one, of course, the multiplicity of one is one. And 1 is an odd number, therefore it will cross to the x-axis. For positive 2, the multiplicity of positive 2 is 2, the exponent outside the parentheses, and 2 is an even number, therefore it will tangent. I have already discussed this. Let's go over my previous video. Behavior of the graph relative to x-axis. Okay. Knowing the end behavior of our graph, as well as the behavior of the graph relative to x-axis, then we can now plot the points. But I have already plotted the points here. So this is our graph. Our graph, the end behavior of our graph is rising to the left. That's why he, we have here an arrowhead going up and falling to the right rising to the left falling to the right okay before it can connect this with a smooth curve of course we have to plot these points we have here negative one zero this is the point of negative one zero next we have one zero this is the point and then we have here two zero and for our y intercept we have here 0, 4. Okay. The maximum number of turning points is 4. So, and remember the behavior of the graph relative to x-axis. Remember at negative 1, 0, our graph will tangent. That's why from this point going here, it did not cross. Okay. It did not cross at negative 1, 0 because at negative 1, 0, it will tangent because the multiplicity is 2 and 2 is an even number. So from this point, okay, it will tangent and then goes up going to the y-intercept. Then here, negative 1. I mean positive 1, 0. And for positive 1, 0, it will cross. So that's why if you have observed here, it crosses the x-axis. And then up to here, 2, 0. Since uh, the multiplicity of 2 is an even number, this will not cross. But this will tangent only to the x-axis so that's why we have a graph that looks like this thank you so much for watching guys kindly like and if you have questions or clarifications regarding the video just write it in the comment box kindly share it to other students especially to the grade 10 students for them to learn or master the lesson please don't forget to subscribe to be updated for more math lesson videos and turn on the bell for notifications. Before I end, let me share to one of the verses from the Bible. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Romans 8 verse 28. That's all for today and God bless you all.